If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. What we'll do first is draw a picture of the cylinder. So the cylinder is shown in black and then right through the center of the cylinder we have this pink line which we've labeled the longitudinal axis. It goes right through the center of the cylinder. But the cylinder is not actually rotating about that longitudinal axis. It's rotating about a different axis that we've colored in red and have labeled RA for a rotational axis. And because the disc is rotating about this red axis as opposed to the longitudinal axis, we have to use a special formula for the rotational inertia of the cylinder. And that special formula is known as the parallel axis theorem. Now when using this formula to calculate the rotational inertia of the cylinder, we're going to set it equal to the rotational inertia about the center of mass, which would be if the cylinder was actually rotating about its longitudinal axis, plus this term mh squared. m, of course, is the mass. h is simply going to be the distance from the longitudinal axis to the rotational axis. Now, the i com, or the rotational inertia about the center of mass, that needs to be looked up in a table of formulas for a uniform cylinder. There should be a table like that in your textbook. And if you look up the i com for a cylinder, you should get the following expression one-half times the mass of the cylinder times its radius squared. And then again, we're going to be adding that to the term mh squared. And then at this point, we could just plug in the known values. We have the mass given to us in kilograms of the standard unit, and then the radius is given in centimeters, as is that distance h. So we're going to just have to convert those into meters. But otherwise, we can go ahead and plug in. Notice again that we've converted the centimeters into meters, and when we calculate this, we should get approximately 0 0.15, and then the unit will be kilograms times meters squared. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now to understand part B of the question, what we're going to do is imagine that we're looking down on the cylinder from this perspective, and we're going to try to draw the picture over here. So here is that end-on view, and we can see right in the center is the longitudinal axis, and then again in red is the rotational axis. Somebody is holding the cylinder. Somebody, unfortunately, with only four fingers, is holding the cylinder in this position. So it's starting from rest, and then they're going to let go. And when they let go, the cylinder is going to sort of fall and rotate simultaneously. You know, it's going to look like this. And so now the disc is actually, or the cylinder is actually spinning, and we can see that the longitudinal axis has fallen a distance and actually that distance previously in the problem we called capital H and so as the longitudinal axis falls a distance H there's going to be a conservation of mechanical energy so let's look at that equation so initially the cylinder begins at rest and therefore the only energy present is the gravitational potential energy but then when the cylinder is released, it's now rotating, and so it's going to end up with rotational kinetic energy. What we're looking for is the angular speed of the cylinder. So we're going to solve this equation for omega. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by 2. We'll divide by the rotational inertia and then take the square root, and that's going to give us omega. We can simply plug in the known values. We have the mass, 9.8 for g. h, again, was that distance from the rotational axis to the longitudinal axis, which was that five centimeters, and then I we found in the previous question. So when you substitute in all the known values and compute that, you should get an angular speed of approximately 11 radians per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send your own question into the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.